you can try this at home. Hey everyone, this is just a quick video about how to replace the electric motor on any tool. This bandsaw I just inherited from a friend and uh, that motor gets way too hot. It's just really old and has too many shorts in the coils. And if a motor is running but it, it doesn't run very well, it turns itself off from getting too hot, there's a good chance it has some shorts. This is especially common with uh, power tools that are older. The really important stuff that you need to match if you're replacing a motor is going to be the voltage, which would typically be 110 to 120 or 220 to 240. The RPMs or rotations per minute should be the same. The horsepower should be the same or greater. And the amperage should be the same or greater, which will be relative to the horsepower. One thing to note is that if your infrastructure is at 15 amps, you would probably want to be under 15 amps if you're on a 15 amp line and sharing that with other tools. Another thing that you really need to match is the phase of the motor. Typical residential service is single phase. So if you buy a three phase motor, for example, you'll need a very expensive converter in order to transform single phase into three phase if you wanted to get the highest performance anyway. And the last thing is the diameter of the shaft, which may not be listed here. You can measure it. I used some calipers, uh, but in a pinch you could probably just use a tape measure. And this is 5 8 There's also a keyway here. That's what that little channel is. And uh, in a pinch you could make a keyway, but it's kind of a pain. And you can see that there's another keyway that's right here on the uh, pulley. And then lastly here is the key, which is a square block of metal that binds the two together, like so. So that basically keeps the pulley and the shaft synchronous. So here's my replacement motor. It's a single phase induction. Uh, this is, as far as I can tell, this is very, very similar to a lot of the Harbor Freight motors. Uh, this is three quarter horse. And you can see it's also keyed, it's five eighths. It says all this stuff here. You can see the uh, 115, 230, it operates on both. And uh, that's the 11 amps on 115 or 5.5 5 on 230, 60 hertz, etc. So this is a, a fully compatible motor other than it's three quarter horse instead of one sixth. So instead of three amps, it's going to pull 11. <laughs> so, like that's a, a little bit higher than it needs to be, but uh, that bandsaw was also quite underpowered, like it was having some serious power issues. So uh, I wanted to make sure I had something that would get me through it. And the other reason is I wanted to check if this would be compatible with the wood lathe that Harbor Freight sells. I'm, I'm considering standardizing around this particular motor because I have a few other tools that could use this kind of horsepower and, and rough profile here. And you can see right here, it also has a, uh, a little reset right there in case it pulls too much amperage. So it's probably a little bit of a waste of amps, but I'm uh, much more confident this thing's gonna last for a long, long time because it's more power than it needs to be. So it's not gonna be too stressed thermally. The other big difference, this actually has a fan in the back and you can see this is completely sealed. It has no way to cool other than just the entire body acting as a heat sink. And uh, the mounting between these is also a little, well, quite a bit different, but they can be mounted on the bottom regardless. And this can also be face mounted, it looks like. I have uh, terrible lighting here, but uh, I did actually have compatible mounts. I had to gouge this out right here. And uh, this wiring looks really complicated, but it's actually quite simple. You can see here they have the uh, line five goes to the hot in this case, line two goes to the neutral, and then ins is the insulation. It just means it doesn't go to anything, but the wires are grouped together, and that's for the, the 115 versus the 230. So, and uh, doing it in that configuration is clockwise. So this spins the, the right direction. I already did a quick test. A uh, couple things, I need to add a switch which I have right here. I'm just gonna drill out a spot right there and, and jam it in. I think that should be sufficient. And it, I couldn't find anything offhand about whether this can be grounded, the casing itself, but I checked 
the resistance between the casing and the neutral and the hot and I checked everything and nothing actually touches. It's, it's totally ungrounded this case. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and ground the case with my, my uh, green line here. And what I'm going to do is, is just use a bunch of heat shrink on here. A few things you would need if you were doing this. Uh, the first thing is I upgraded my line over here to 14 gauge, which can support 15 amps. The other line I, I think was probably 16 gauge, which would have potentially worked fine because this is only 11 amps, but since I could uh, bump it up, I decided to go ahead and do that. And uh, you can see this uh, little metal bracket here, which locks in the line, and uh, that's so it can't be pulled out, right? So exactly what you'd use in a breaker box, really standard electrical part you can get at your hardware store. And where I'm planning to add the ground is actually right here to this mount that's on the reset switch, the overload reset. And I'll just go ahead and crimp this on here to the green line and uh, hook it in like that. And then I'm just gonna heat shrink all this good stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of a process, so I'm not gonna bother filming it, but you get the idea. So here I have my, uh, my common, my neutral, in other words, tied to these three lines. And I have the uh, insulated lines here capped off with, capped off with a uh, wire nut and wrapped in electrical tape, pretty basic. And I, uh, for the switch I ended up using on the hot, I put that in the middle there. And then I uh, just tied that to the other line for the motor for clockwise. And then here I tied in my ground. And there's actually a, a slight cut in this wire, uh, but I'm not going to worry about it because the ground is essentially exposed anyway. So there's not a whole lot of point. I mean, all the entire body of this can short against ground, which is the point. That's how it's a safety feature, essentially. The other thing is I'm using a 14 gauge line and uh, you can see that right here, this piece is for 16 and 14 gauge. And so that's the one I used to make sure it was compatible. So if you do something fancy like this, make sure that it's compatible with the gauge of wire and the amount of current that you're using. And for reference, 14 gauge, uh, you can pull 15 amps. 12 gauge, you can pull 20 amps. You can look this all up online. Anyway, so here's my switch. And I'm just going to do a quick test and then close this off. The only other thing I have to do, I have to tighten up this pulley. Apparently my motor position is just a little different and it's, it's a little too loose. It's supposed to be loose, but not this loose. I replaced the, the motor last weekend, added this, uh, this new 15 amp switch, uh, upgraded the electrical cord so that it could handle the additional amperage for the three quarter horse. And then I went ahead and I purchased a new V-belt that was a little bit more appropriate for the spacing of the motor. And uh, that seems to be working really well. It's catching beautifully. The last thing I did was purchase some 62 inch, half inch, 14 TPI uh, bandsaw blades. I actually bought five of these. And uh, they don't have the best reviews, but it's a tall order to find a, a good half inch uh, blade for this sort of saw. This half inch does fit. I could probably even go a little bit higher, but my whole goal here is to uh, be able to resaw a three and a half to four inch piece of wood. And <laughs> I definitely couldn't do that before the upgrades, but now I have the horsepower, I have the belt that can drive it. And now I have the half inch blade for resaw. So I'm excited to give this a shot. Well, I, I couldn't resaw very effectively because the camera was in the way and I didn't want to get my hands close. But I was trying to just center. And you can see I was able to center pretty well. I didn't draw a line, so I probably could get a better resawing uh, effect if I was to draw a line. You're probably wondering, like I was, why why is there sparking? It's um, these, woo, that's hot. It's because these old uh, saws like this, they just have a little stopper. It's like a brass stopper. And uh, so when I put 
forward pressure on this, it hits against it and it just spins. So it's not a very good system. Um, and it immediately started sparking, which concerned me a lot at first. I think I think this is actually residue from that. So um, I'd like to say I could probably adjust my angle just a hair, but the reality is it's when you're resawing, you're putting so much force that way that I think it's it's kind of unavoidable. Yeah, I just went ahead and tightened it. So I'll try resawing again and see if I still get sparks. Even after tightening this thing as much as I could, uh, I still I can definitely resaw this, but it's just on a slight angle. And I even stabilized using just the friction coefficient between these two boards to stabilize so that it would act as one solid piece. So I guess because it's consistent, I can potentially compensate by angling this table a little bit to resaw a little straighter. But the other problem is that uh, I, have, I have to actually drive this in on a slight angle, like just, just a, like maybe a two and a half degree angle. I have to drive this through. I can't drive it through straight or it won't follow the line. I don't know if maybe, maybe, yeah, I mean, I can feel this is a cross cut blade, so that might be why. It doesn't actually say whether it's cross cut the only reason I'm guessing it's cross-cut is because I can feel that the direction of the teeth, like they all have a slight hook bias and it's back and forth, which is for crossing grain, whereas rip cut tends to be all straighter. And see, I can feel, I can feel it bumping back and forth on here. So I think this is technically cross-cut, which might, might be a, a factor. Anyway, uh, at least I can actually rip something four inches now which I couldn't do before, and I'm going to go ahead and replace a lot of the old equipment I have, the old motors, with these three-quarter horsepower motors, such as my 1930s automatic hacksaw, which I also need to fix. So if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Uh, I might also do one on replacing my, my other motor. I, I will also note this thing is running extremely cool. The other motor would have long been re like really really hot by now so uh, i hope that this helps you replace some motors obviously i could have undersized this quite a bit it was i think it was one sixth and now it's three quarters so it's quite a lot more power uh, which i think is fine it's going to draw more power but the amount of torque is so much better uh, along with replacing the belt that was ancient and you know delaminating as always thanks for watching